According to my studies of Ibn Ishaq's Sirat Rasulallah, the biography of Muhammad, I was struck by the fact that his first wife, Khadija, had an enormous and lasting influence on both his theological learning and his psychology. Because she was a woman, the followers of Muhammad have purposefully neglected to highlight her outstanding contributions to Muhammad's self-perceived mission of creating the Quran as a scripture for his fellow pagan Arabs. Will you elaborate on this? Your conclusion is perfectly correct. In fact, and without the slightest exaggeration, neither Muhammad nor his Quran would have become part of history without Khadija's singular contributions. Let us, as usual, look at the Muhammadan records themselves. It was Ibn Ishaq's Sirat that gave us the very earliest report as well as a great number of myths about Muhammad and Khadija on pages 82-83. Khadija bint Khuwailid was a twice widowed very rich and powerful merchant woman in her 40s when Muhammad was about 25 years of age. According to the so-called traditions, Muhammad was a decent, loyal, honest and intelligent man. Because of his reputation, Khadija employed him to take her goods to Syria and trade with them, in spite of the fact that the traditions also assert that he was illiterate. After he returned with the merchandise, she was able to sell them at a great profit. It was Khadija, contrary to the male-dominated traditions of the Arabs, who proposed marriage to Muhammad, and he accepted. As usual in Muhammadan Islam, Controversy surrounds Khadija's children by her second husband and involves the other daughters or stepdaughters of Muhammad. These daughters were Zainab, Ruqayya and Umm Kulthum. Some historians say that these were Khadija's daughters by her second husband, whereas others insist they were her daughters by Muhammad. This is not very probable considering Khadija's advanced age at the time she married Muhammad. Fatima was the daughter of Muhammad and Khadija. She was Muhammad's favorite daughter. Two boys who died at an early age were Al-Qasim and Al-Tahir. According to the traditions also, depending on which one of course, Khadija was a Hanifiyya, that is, one who was neither a Christian nor of the belief of the Jews, but one who believed only in the God of Abraham. Her uncle was Waraka bin Nawfal, who had converted from paganism to Christianity. It is extremely important that the listeners should be made aware that the Christians and the so-called Jews of Arabia were not foreigners, but actually aboriginal and indigenous natives of Arabia who had willingly, without coercion, converted to these beliefs, centuries before Muhammad and his Quran, but were subsequently destroyed and or exiled by Muhammad and his followers. One of the most revealing hadiths regarding Khadija's importance is part of the following when Muhammad allegedly encountered the angel Gabriel for the first time. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 1.3 narrated by Aisha. Thereupon he caught me for the third time and pressed me, and then released me and said, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaka khalaka al-insana min alaq. That is, read in the name of your Lord who has created created man from a clot. Then Allah's apostle returned with the inspiration and with his heart beating severely. Then he went to Khadija bin Khuwailid and said, cover me, cover me. They covered him till his fear was over and after that he told her everything that had happened and said, I fear that something may happen to me. Khadija replied, never, by Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. Khadija then accompanied him to her cousin Waraka bin Nawfal who during the pre-Islamic period became a Christian and used to write the writing with Hebrew letters. He would write from the Gospels in Hebrew as much as Allah wished him to write. He was an old man and had lost his sight. Khadija said to Waraka, listen to the story of your nephew, O oh my cousin. Waraka asked, O oh my nephew, what have you seen? Allah's apostle described whatever he had seen. Waraka said, this is the same one who keeps the secrets the angel Gabriel whom Allah had sent to Moses. Our listeners should know that the angel Gabriel never appeared to Moses, but to Mary, the mother of Jesus. And if Waraka was truly a learned Christian, he would not have uttered such incredible drivel. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 117 narrated by Ali ibn Abu Talib. Khadija asked Allah Apostle about her children who had died in the days of ignorance. Thereupon Allah's messenger said, 
They are in hellfire. And when he saw the sign of disgust on her face, he said, if you were to see them in their station, you would hate them. She said, Allah Messenger, what about my child that was born of your loins? He said, it is in paradise. Then Allah Messenger said, verily, the believers and their children will be in paradise and the unbelievers and their children in the hellfire. Muhammad, Allah's Messenger, showed his usual legendary compassion and mercy by consigning innocent children to hell's fires just because their parents were unbelievers. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 6181 narrated by Anas bin Malik. The Prophet said, among the women of the universe, Mary, daughter of Imran, Khadija, daughter of Khuwailid, Fatima, daughter of Muhammad, and Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, are enough for you. Our listeners should be aware that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was not the daughter of Imran, nor was Asiya the wife of Pharaoh. Neither the Hebrew Bible nor the New Testament mention these falsehoods. The above are the usual concocted stories that were created during the 300 years after Muhammad's death. Not a single story is based on facts or any kind of records that existed among the Arabs. Just pure lies and mendacities. The following view of Khadija can be found in the Shia book Fatima the Gracious. Khadija's financial support had a great role in strengthening Islam during its prime days, when it was still in the formation stage and critically needed material aid. Allah foreordained Khadija's property to help Islam fulfill its goals. Almost all of the stories regarding Muhammad's wives are the product of centuries of later concoctions to create for Muhammad a family identical in his holiness and purity to that of Jesus and Mary. The most important conclusions regarding Khadija's background show that contrary to the perverted picture painted about the Jahiliya Arabs before Muhammad's Islam regarding their women are the following facts. Khadija was able to inherit her father's wealth without the interference of any males of her family. That she was able to act as a merchant without any male's permission. That she was a very successful merchant in her own right, independent of any male. It was she who proposed to Muhammad instead of the traditional other way around. It was she who supported Muhammad throughout his life with her, contrary to the prevailing traditions. She was a very independent and assertive woman. She calmed him when he was disturbed. She encouraged him when he was afraid. She comforted him when he was unsure. She knew about the one and only Allah long before Muhammad's alleged revelations. As a Hanifiyya, she was already a believer in the one and only God of Abraham. She exerted enormous influence upon him away from his original paganism. Her Christian relative, Waraka, exposed Muhammad to both the Torah and the Gospels. Contrary to what the traditions assert, he did not marry any other while she was alive, not because he loved her so much, but because she was financially much more powerful than he was. In the end, Muhammad, as was his wont, paid the women of Arabia back with his usual ingratitude by reducing them to the level of sex slaves and domestic animals. Without Khadija's moral, psychological and financial support, Muhammad would not have been able to compose his Quran or succeed in fooling hundreds of millions of people into believing that he was the messenger of Allah. In fact, the female followers of Muhammad should revolt against all the oppressive, terrorizing and humiliating man-made rules and regulations, especially those who live in the Western democracies and throw away the shackles of enslavement that have been put around them.